So we're going to go ahead and get started. Sorry we're a little bit late, but uh, uh, hopefully you will bear with me. And again, those of you who are here uh, live, we're at the Barrow County Chamber of Commerce in Winder, Georgia. And uh, Zaxby's is uh, feeding us today, which is great. I'm sorry those on the webinar cannot eat this great chicken, but uh, we'll eat without you. My name is Tom Murphy, and uh, I am with Murphy Consulting Incorporated. Short name for our company is Mercon. And we are in the business of helping people leverage the power of the Internet to grow their business. Uh, two primary areas, we do Internet marketing and we do Microsoft Access database development as well. Most of our uh, Internet marketing revolves around Constant Contact's suite of tools which help you do email, events, surveys, promotions, websites. Actually, Constant Contact does not do websites yet, although uh, they'll probably be offering that shortly. But uh, we do develop websites and uh, maintain them as well. So those are my two primary areas of expertise. Uh, if you need to get in touch with me, text me on my phone, go to my website, uh, other connect connection areas. Uh, please be, feel free to do that. At the end of uh, our seminar webinar today, those who are here, the last page of the packet that I gave you is an evaluation form. I would appreciate it if you fill that out. Those who are on the webinar, I'll send you a survey just to get some feedback on, uh, on what you thought about the webinar. And also, there's one specific question in the survey and on the evaluation sheet that talks about being a Mercon VIP. If you're a constant contact customer, uh, you can be part of Mercon's VIP club. Basically what that says is that uh, you have access to me as a consultant. And uh, uh, although a lot of, if you call me, uh, most of the time I don't charge you for what answers that I may give you. Uh, you also would get an, a, a monthly newsletter, which has some more information about ongoing changes or updates uh, that have to do with constant contact as well as other services because I monitor the uh, email marketing network uh, pretty much globally. So please uh, fill that out if you'd like to be part of that. It has nothing to do with your constant contact uh, pricing or anything uh, except to pair you <coughs> with, with Mercon. <coughs> I will send you a copy of the slides today uh, online as part of that email at the uh, probably uh, either this afternoon or first thing tomorrow morning. And if those of you on the webinar, if you have questions, type them in and we'll answer them at the end. Those of you who are present here, which I really appreciate you being here, just uh, raise your hand and we'll answer questions. Uh, I know there are some who, who are not familiar with Constant Contact. So I'm going to take just a moment and uh, tell you about Constant Contact, hopefully. Constant Contact can help you grow your business. There are four primary modules in Constant Contact. Uh, one is newsletters and announcements, which is basically email marketing. The other is offers and promotions, which allows you to do deals and other promotions as a, as a campaign, marketing campaign. Uh, the third is feedback and surveys. Feedback and surveys allow you to take, give online surveys or take online surveys. Uh, those of you on the webinar, that's what you will get this after, afternoon is a survey using constant contact survey tool. Also allows you to put po uh, polls in your email that you send out, which is also very helpful. It's interesting in this political climate how many people are doing that. And last but not least, events and registration. Which allow you to do online registrations uh, for your events that you may have. Also allows you to charge people for those and to use uh, PayPal or other means to collect that, uh, those fees. Lots of good reporting in that as well, so you can keep track of what's going on with your event. So those are the four uh, portions of Constant Contact. It's one toolkit, one login, gives you all a large set of marketing tools, 
right at your disposal again with one login. There's basically two levels of uh, uh, or tiers of subscriptions, just email or it's called email or email plus. Email plus gets you access to all four of those different uh, components of constant contact. The hallmark, I feel, of constant contact, and by the way, we've been uh, with constant contact for six years uh, and been doing presentations like this for about the last two and a half years. The hallmark, I think, for Constant Contact, besides the great tools that they offer, is their customer support. 24-7, American speaking, toll-free, coaching, not sales, coaching support. If you have a question at 1 o'clock in the morning because you're trying to get ready for something, call the toll-free number. You will get a person who is knowledgeable in, what they, in Constant Contact and can answer your questions there. I use them myself probably uh, uh, twice a week to get answers. Very friendly. Yeah. Like you if you ever been to Chick Fil A, Constant Contact is the Chick Fil A of uh, of online support. They do an incredible job. And if you if it takes an hour to get your question answered, they'll take an hour to get it done. So let's talk about automating your marketing. How many, uh, show of hands uh, here in the room and online, how many people think marketing has changed over the last five years? All right, very good. One of the uh, changes that has occurred, and there are some folks in the room here that I've been talking to that uh, have been in marketing and sales for a long time. Uh, this is the uh, model that we used to use it says go out and talk to as many people as you possibly can gather up as <clears throat> as many prospects as you can work on them and hopefully one or two of them will drop out the bottom as customers it takes a lot of time a lot of efforts very expensive the problem with that model is that you don't take care of those customers you go back to feed the funnel feed the funnel and uh, it's, it's interesting how those philosophies change. Well, because marketing has changed, and primarily because of social media, this is the way that you have to think about marketing now. This is for us, and I, I'll, I'm an old-timer in marketing. Doing this the way I'm going to describe to you is gut-wrenching. It is just, I can't make myself not do it the old way. The new way says, don't worry about prospects. Use your time, your effort, your money to take care of your customers. When you take care of your customers and do it right, they will share your information. They will recommend you, and you will get enough new customers in the top of the funnel to take care of your growth. And interestingly enough, if you have 100 customers, how many people do they know? Most people know about 225. Uh, show of hands here locally, how many people have 200 friends or fans on Facebook? 200. Only one? Two? I don't have a Facebook. Three? Uh-oh, there's a real outlier, no Facebook account. Uh-oh. LinkedIn, how many how many uh, followers do you have on LinkedIn? So what, 500? Yeah, hundreds, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. So you can use social media and your customer set who ought to be raving fans to grow your customer base by referral. Think about this. Change to this. If you're not doing it this way, I'll guarantee you this is the way to do it now. It's called flipping the funnel. Flip the funnel. Don't go out there and spend your time, money, and effort pumping stuff in the top. Grit your teeth. Believe that it works. And do it the way marketing is now, which is by flipping the funnel, taking care of your customers, which you really want to do, and grow your business that way. So that as a, as a preface to what we're going to talk about. 
you know that marketing is about getting results yes yes automation helps you steer new list subscribers new list subscribers uh, towards becoming donors or customers and generates action and information that you can measure that you can measure it ensures that you have an ongoing timely response to customers who subscribe and we're talking about automation subscribe to your email list expecting to receive something in return and that may be one of these things in a nutshell automation tools help you get what you want while delivering what they want you get what you want by giving them what they want that's that's kind of sales and marketing and customer support 101 but uh, automation can help you do that automation tools help you get and convert new subscribers into paying customers and supportive donors who's in a nonprofit on purpose okay all right great um, five years ago I, I was a nonprofit not on purpose but then there's a lot of others as well but uh, you get those faster things happen behind the scenes while automation is working for you uh, while you're already continuing to do what you already do so it's kind of a kind of a no-brainer once you uh, accept the concept we talked about flipping the funnel by marketing to people who you already know one thing that's different that I didn't point out about flipping the funnel what we do now or shouldn't be doing now but trying to pump things in the top of that funnel is we're talking to strangers most of the time we're out contacting strangers the flipping the funnel says talk to people that know you talk to people who know you they go pe talk to people who know them but that you don't know it's a classic referral network okay so uh, if you if you fail to send information once you have got people on your list then you run the risk of losing a potential customer and we can avoid that through automation consider <laughs> some of these statistics just blow my mind 91 percent of people check their email daily how many people have already checked their email 10 times a day 10 times a day okay it's it's incredible uh, check their email daily I uh, it's 91% of people, but those 91% probably check it 10 times a day. So you have a huge opportunity using email to get in front of the audience that you want to get in front of, because that's where they are. They're checking email. Today, people do their homework, of course, before they make a big decision about purchasing or doing business with somebody. So what you want to do is to stay out in front of them it's called top of mind anybody in marketing has heard that for eons stay top of mind because people then go look at your website your Facebook page your LinkedIn profile and they make decisions based on those profiles they also when they go out there and they sign up on your email list which should be on all of those they expect to get something in return what you get in return using email marketing is this and I I did not the first time I saw the statistic I did not believe it I can't imagine that you could invest a dollar and get forty four dollars back email marketing gives this return and this is not a constant contact statistic this is a uh, I believe it came from litmus uh, produced this particular statistic excuse me salesforce.com that's even uh, that's even better uh, tremendous return on your investment tremendous return on your investment and what we have seen is that prospects that you get through email marketing done the proper way the conversion rate is three times higher than other kinds of social media better than Facebook LinkedIn Twitter the top three uh, so through email marketing you have a better chance of creating a paying customer or donor I'm affiliated with uh, Piedmont Casa which is a court appointed special advocates group uh, for this three county area uh, we live and die by this so 
we always like more supporters and donors. Before we get started uh, too deep into this, let's uh, clarify some terms. There are uh, five terms that you should understand uh, when I say them, what, what that means. Autoresponder is uh, taking a series of pre-designed automated emails designed with a specific goal in mind that is triggered, triggered when a contact or subscriber is added to a particular list through your online sign-up forms. Yes, sir. Will Question. Be on your site? No, we're not. You just have to write it all down. No, not true. I'll send you a set. Of <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I'll send you a set of the slides and a link to the recording of this event, so uh, you can have both of those. So, autoresponder is a set of emails that are triggered by some event that go out in sequence, and we'll talk more in detail. Uh, there are Database triggers, database triggers are automated emails sent at a particular date. Wouldn't it be nice if you could automatically send somebody a happy birthday every time their birthday came up, every time their insurance agents love this policy renewal time. Com Chambers of Commerce love it as well because everybody has to renew every year. So an automated, a date triggered, date based trigger. Uh, a contact is an existing email address you already have. Subscriber is a brand new email address. Campaigns, and this is kind of a, uh, a an industry term. It's whatever it is that you're sending out. Your message, your promotion. Doesn't have to be this many, five or ten, but even one email sent out can be a campaign. Okay, is that pretty clear? And the campaign is, uh, again, something that you expect somebody to take some action on. So here are the things we're going to talk about today in detail. What is it? How do you know if you ought to use one? <laughs> because it's not right for everybody. How to use it the right way? Next steps. We'll go to, through those in detail. Small business owner or nonprofit, and we have both of those in the room today. We know you don't have a lot of time, but in today's market, you know you need to market your business or nonprofit yourself. I was talking to one of our uh, attendees here locally uh, in the room today uh, about working too much in your business as opposed to working on your business. Differentiation. Most of us take small businesses, take too much time working in our business and not stepping back and working on it. But you got to do that marketing. You got to do that marketing, which is working on your business. Automated communications that you find yourself sending manually all the time or wish you had the time to send more regularly is a powerful and easy way to communicate a consistent and unified message about your company or nonprofit and the things who you are and what you do. Cool thing is that they work. While you do, they work in the background while you're working, while you're working in your business, they're working on your business. Way to do that. Autoresponders work uh, while you are taking care of your business and welcoming new subscribers and telling them more about your business. When someone signs up for your mailing list, they automatically get sent, set it up this way promotional material or messages that you want potential new supporter subscribers prospects to get. That could be a coupon or a discount, video to watch. I do that a lot. Downloadable assets like a guide or an ebook. Uh, thinking about uh, um, we have a massage therapist here in the room today, which is uh, good to see you today. Uh, there are some things you can do yourself to uh, better uh, live better. And so those kinds of things can be sent out to people sharing your knowledge. Or it could be just a simple thank you. So uh, any of those things could be. But the most important part is the welcome. The very first contact with you after they sign up is the most important. And again, it can be triggered. We talked about dates. but 
it can be triggered uh, by events as well. What is the difference between date-based and list join kinds of automation? Here are some examples of what date-based automation could be. Anything that has a specific date associated with it, again, birthdays, anniversaries, uh, in constant contact anyway. And by the way, this is not, this is industry standard kinds of information. This is not specifically constant contact, although in constant contact, you have two fields in uh, a person's record that you can assign a date to and use those for whatever that you would like to, and then use those as triggers. So uh, date-based automation uh, is described there. List join information that says somebody joins my list, now what happens? Join the list, now what happens? Could be a series. A lot of times our businesses are somewhat complex. Mine has really three different components. You can't just send them a message and they understand what that is. Four or five or six messages over a period of time, the same one to each person, the same every time, gets that message across. So you could, when they sign up on the list, start, and then they get a series of, of messages in addition to your normal kind of emails that you may send out. So let's take a look at a autoresponder in action. Let's say that someone is searching for a gift for somebody special. Could be a visit to a massage therapist or to uh, a fitness expert, uh, personal trainer. Uh, they do a quick online search for boutiques and they can come across your business. Either and that might be through social media or on your website or for perhaps a friend who really likes what you have. They're interested in the items featured on your website but want even more information or hoping for a discount of some kind. So they notice that you're offering a 15% discount for your services for new subscribers. Sounds like constant contact. Uh, so they sign up for your email list. That's what you want them to do. They subscribe. So you've made sure that the first email that's sent to them, this welcome email, properly reflects your business, but it's part of an autoresponder series. And along with that message, maybe in case of this business, they sent out a coupon, that 15% off coupon to a new subscriber. They get the email right, at, right after they subscribe, which is just like you want it to be and they get the information about what else is in the store and that kind of thing. The subscriber is left, left with a great first impression, the same first impression every time because it's repeated. So they decide to shop in your boutique with their coupon. And they become a new customer. Very simple sequence. This could work for you even if you sell online or you're a service kind of a business because in the end, the cycle ends with your new subscriber making a purchase from you or taking the next step with your business, which is what you want to have happen. Does that make sense, everybody? Okay, great. So how do I know? How do I know if this will work for me? Here's a couple of questions. Do you send the same stuff every time over and over again? Do you, <laughs> do you neglect to send information to new subscribers? Do you believe each subscriber should re receive a friendly welcome? And I'm going to click right on through these. If you answered yes to any of these, autoresponder could be a great tool for you to do what we've been talking about, and that is send them the right message at the, at the right time. So autoresponder might be for you in that case. 
According to a study by Epsilon Email Institute and Chief Marketer, welcome emails, that's the very first email that they get in this series, consistently have about a 60% open rate. Now that doesn't sound very high, but typically 20 to 25% on an email, and if you're using constant contact, you get all of that, those metrics so you can verify this. That's about the normal open rate depending on your business. 60% is exceptional. So the very first email they get, 60% open rate. So take that opportunity to give your subscribers more of what they are looking for so that you in turn can get what you're looking for. That welcome email, and I, I know I'm harping on welcome email, but it's, it, is, it is the key to success in automation. And 89% of consum consumers turn to Google, Bing, other search engines to find information on products and services or businesses prior to making purchases. Just think of how you do that. Do that all the time. I now have it on my iPhone a barcode scanner. You can scan a barcode and it will tell you everybody that sells that thing and what they sell it for. Cool. I wish email marketing had a I'm going to have to make a barcode for email marketing. But uh, the future, your futures and customers and supporters are most likely to encounter your brand from online searches, from online searches, or the Chamber of Commerce for that matter. So if they want more information about your products and services or mission, they'll sign up on your mailing list typically to expect to experience your company and they expect to get something in return for providing you that email list. So the least thing you could do if they signed up is to say hi, <laughs> welcome. So again, the welcome email is very important in that case. So how to do it the right way. I think uh, I since I saw a lot of heads nodding here locally, everybody accepts that, gee, this would, might be something that would be of help. So we're going to take a look at these four items. How to use it the right way. First thing that you need to do is to map out an autoresponder email before, of course, you get started. What's the message that I want to send broken into pieces? What is the end result that I want to achieve? So you're thinking in terms of what you want that new subscriber to do, learn what action you want them to take uh, when they sign up on your list. You need to kind of be strategic with each email as each in a series should, should lead to a result that means something significant to your business at a pace that is right for your organization and for the consumer. Uh, and basically what that says is don't blast them with tons of information, cut it up into pieces that are easily understood. Our guidance on emails is 20 lines of text, three images, one link. And I, I think I'll go through that in a minute. But what you're trying to do is to get them from point A To point B, action, communication. No extra fluff. Minimalization is key, and giving them some incentive is also key. If you want to donate, sign up as a volunteer, visit your shop, make a purchase, coupon you provided them, make that the most prominent next action step in the email and close to the top. What percentage, I'm going to ask the folks in the room, what percentage of people read email on their smartphones? Anybody? How many? What percentage? Uh, probably 30%. Anybody else? Percentage? I would say more than 30 51%. And I've heard more recent statistics, 65% read their email on their smartphone. Now, they may scan through it. They may go back to their desktop and look in more detail, but they use that, depending on how you look at it, <laughs> iPhone or other uh, 
uh, device to read email. Yes, more people are using search, especially local search, to find what they're looking for. Absolutely. So let's discuss what you need to do to set up next the behind the scenes setup before you do the scheduling to schedule. Uh, in order that our automation automation campaign ooh, excuse me campaign works. You need to look at your subscribers, those contacts that you have, and do what with them? I ask the folks in the room here. What do you need to do with that huge list of, of subscribers? Well, that's for sure. Thank you. <laughs> but it's in terms of... Excellent. What you're talking about is segmentation. So you take this list because not everybody wants to know some the same thing and you cut it into segments this slide has a uh, has a picture at the bottom down there of different segments of a person that a person wants to divide people into from the get-go now you already have a list you can go back and segment those new ones you want to know are you interested in uh, events free shopping uh, generalized interest what is it so that you send them what they're interested in. And when they sign up, then they get a welcome email. Maybe this, everybody may get the same welcome email or they may get a targeted welcome email and go down a targeted series of automated emails. So you wanna know what it is that they're interested in. Uh, this is, uh, again, it's BISC Imports. Uh, they created a list for their subscribers to choose from a list to create their list of what type of mailings they'd like to receive. Whatever a subscriber's interest, then these contacts will be added to your lists automatically if you're using Constant Contact, and I think there are other services that do something similar, so that you'll know what to send to them. If you target as opposed to shotgun, much better result. So when you set up your on autoresponder, Make sure that it speaks to the interests of the people in the list that they want to receive. If, they, if they're looking for discounts, then talk to them about discounts. If they're looking for just general interest, send them general interest information. Putting these best practices into place and harnessing organizational benefits of list segmentation target marketing right off the bat when you start your list sign up means you'll already have a nicely organized segmented list to start with. And there they are. A lot of times people take the, that list and they send everything to all those people get everything. What happens when you do that? Anybody? You lose half of them because they say, I've, <laughs> it's a great example of, pictures of cat people, you know, they have cats and you send them, you're a vet and you send out email, and you send all the cat people something about dogs, you know, unsubscribe. I don't need that. So uh, segmenting them in this particular way really makes it easier to create your emails too, because you know what they're interested in and who it's going to. And that's usually a stumbling block for most people is the content of the email. So this makes it, makes it a lot easier. Again, the welcome email autoresponder should remind somebody that they subscribe to your mailing list, first of all. That, that sounds like a no-brainer. Well, yeah, well, how many emails do you get every day? So welcome email. Hey, you subscribe to our mailing list. Thank you very much. Make sure you include your logo and other branding so they know who it's from. Tell them how many emails that you plan to send them in the series so they are expecting them. Uh, one caution about frequency also. If you have five you're going to send out, don't send them all out in the same day. Spread them out over a period of time so that they have time to... Uh, digest what it is that you're talking to them about. 
Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, and you probably have once somebody you probably have a periodic email you're sending out anyway. Uh, maybe that's monthly or quarterly or whatever. So they're going to get these in between. Okay. So <laughs> don't put five emails on the same day. That that's I guarantee you that's a good way to get them to unsubscribe. So what do we offer them if we want to send them an incentive of some kind? Uh, what do we do? Well, best way to access uh, way to access what you have to offer is to make a list of all the digital assets that you have that you're going to offer to people, uh, as well as the capacity to run a promotion or offer an ongoing discount to all future subscribers. And you begin to see an abundance of things that you can talk to them about. Most people says, well, I don't have anything. Well, you sit down and you look at what you're doing. You have a lot of information, things about your business, things that you know that they don't know that you can use. So you find a common thread amongst all those things that you may want to send out and you order them in that particular way. Remember, you want the content to be evergreen. What does that mean? Evergreen ever, evergreen says it doesn't change much because that autoresponder is going to go out every time somebody subscribes. You don't want to have something in there that's date dependent. So it's not date or event specific. It's evergreen. We'll talk about that a little more. So the options are uh, pretty endless. Uh, and really go a long way in capturing somebody's attention to your business and stirring up interest in further experience with your company. And I'll let you look at those for just a second. Let me talk a little bit more about Evergreen. Uh, Evergreen basically says make it timeless. Unless you're going to monitor it very closely, which you don't want, you want it to be working in the background, you don't want to be monitoring it in the foreground, if you will. What you're sending out should change only if your business changes. You don't want to have to be going, remember to go in there every week and change the date on something. So evergreen. Timeless. It doesn't ever expire. That's the key point. You're trying to get people to do something specific, some call to action. Go to my website, look at my Facebook page, come to my store, take advantage of this coupon. Some specific call to action. And this is probably the most important. Keep it short and sweet. Uh, one thought, one action. Uh, you get emails from me. Uh, especially about seminars and things, and they're, you know, they're this long. And I know when I send them out, that is the wrong, <laughs> wrong thing to do. But that's the way we do that. These kind of emails are very short, to the point, one thought, one action in a series. Yes, sir. Yeah. The only the only long emails that people like to see and they don't read them, they just look down through them, are from nonprofit organizations because they want to know what's happening to their money. Otherwise, don't tell me something short, quick that I can uh, have value, get value from, and then let me go on to the next 500 emails that I may have. So make these autoresponder emails your best con content that you can possibly give them with these guidelines. Once you've mapped out your short series of starting with your hello or welcome email, once you've des designed that series, you next want to consider the timing, the timing of when they're sent out. When is the best time? To deliver a message, it's when somebody's there to read it. Okay, deliver the message in a timely way so that each email in a series is a reminder 
or a gentle nudge toward the final action that you want them to take. You are building a relationship. Email marketing is relationship building. Relationship building. You don't do business with somebody the first time you meet them a lot of times, especially if it's a large dollar amount you're considering. Nonprofits are that way specifically. I don't know if I want to donate to your cause until I know more about your cause. Okay. So start the series off with an immediate welcome email. Think about how often that you want to send it out. Is it weekly? Monthly? Bi-weekly? Occasionally? Is that the frequency of your normal kinds of email? Then you want to set your autoresponder up so that it kind of hits in between those. And an autoresponder uh, in constant contact anyway could be scheduled out for a year. So you can do one a quarter if you want to. Something the same every single time. So Again, back to something I said earlier, don't overwhelm them with tons of stuff. Think about how you're doing your, your normal kinds of emails and set up your autoresponders, at the ones that are associated with the, uh, when they sign up on your email list, according to in-between in kinds of things. Let's see, how many times have I said this? Don't forget the welcome email. <laughs> the very first email you send out again is uh, exceptionally important. And you may wonder why we harp on that, but it's, uh, uh, I, tell, I can tell when I sign up on an email list and I get a welcome email and it, it tries to sell me something immediately. Well, I don't know you enough to buy something from you yet. So don't ask me to buy something. Give me a discount coupon. Okay, but don't, don't beat me up. And whether it's uh, business to business, business to consumer, nonprofit, same kind of thing. So believe it or not, that's it, sort of. Come to the end of the presentation, at least the formal presentation on automation. And hopefully you've got some concepts and some feel for this tool, which how many people are already using email automation in the room? How many? None. That's the most underused tool that, uh, that we have to offer. Realtors call it drip marketing. Drip marketing. Drip, drip, drip. How often do you buy a house? It used to be every seven years. Now it's probably every 10 years. Drip, drip drip 10 years later oh yeah I need to call so and so that's what autoresponder and email does for you so you've learned about what content to create how to deliver that powerful punch to make the la first important impression with your welcome email this is what you do to need to get to do to get that started Think about how automation could be helped and used in your business. Identify the call to action. It's worthless to just send stuff out to people without some reason to do that. Reason for you, reason for them. So identify calls to action and the goals that they should support. Create those segmented lists so that you only sends things to those who would be interested in them. Evergreen content, again, we talked about that, uh, timeless content in that series. And then think about the timing. It doesn't have to be every Thursday, every second Thursday, every third Thursday. You know, it can be very depending upon what your normal email schedule is. And if that seems a little overwhelming, meet Shelly. Shelly owns a uh, business that has to do with dogs, obviously. Uh, 
and this is a real person, by the way. Uh, Shelly is a marketer, and she uses constant contact to help her with her marketing. All it takes is constant contact, and uh, you too can be a marketer in the background while you're while you're working in your business. You can let uh, automation work on your business for you. And with constant contact, it's pretty simple to get started. Uh, anyone in the room today uh, not a constant contact subscriber? Yeah, most. You, you're you one by default, sounds like. All right, good. <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, you did. Uh, if you contact me today, either uh, send me a text on my telephone for those, those of you who are uh, out in actually all over the United States today uh, or in the room today, just uh, you send me a text, tell me here that you'd like to start a paid email only or email plus account. You will receive a gift card uh, that's equal to your first month's subscription. You'll get an hour, probably more than an hour of my time to help you get started. Plus, you'll get a free custom template built for you based on your website or your Facebook page that is mobile responsive, mobile friendly. Mobile responsive, mobile friendly. That's the kind of template that you want to use. Why? Because I'm not signing up for Marty Well, that's right. But see, what you for seventy only seventy nine dollars. If you're a current customer, you can get a template built for you for $79, and the URL is on there. You can sign up to do that. And again, for those in the room, I'm sorry that the picture is pink, but uh, I see that our hostess is also pink. Is today pink day at the chamber? The president of the chamber is also wearing a pink shirt, so uh, it must be pink day. That's why our screen is pink here. It's chamber. Well, it, it's a chamber of commerce day, that's for sure. Ah, that's pretty cool, and I didn't do that on purpose. And all the packages are no contract; they're month to month, 30-day cancelable, 100% money back guarantee. Um, if you don't like it, we give you your money back. Uh, Toll-free, American-speaking uh, coaching support is included, even if you just try it on a trial basis. Again, my name is Tom Murphy. Uh, I'm with Murphy Consulting Incorporated. Today, uh, hopefully I'll be sending you an email with uh, those of you who are on the webinar with a link to uh, a survey. And at the end of the survey are links to the recorded version and, uh, and it's the recording of today's version, not another pre-recorded version as well as uh, a link to the slides. And uh, for those who are in the room today, I'll send that to you by email. And uh, you have an evaluation sheet. I would really appreciate you filling out the evaluation sheet and giving it to, to me before we leave. And if you'll pardon me just a second. I'm going to see if I can.